Making Chicken Salad this week is brought to you by Three Count Pro Wrestling Academy. Are you in Brisbane and thought about learning to be a wrestler? Well, here's your chance. Three Count Pro Wrestling Academy are based out of Beanley in Queensland, and they're committed to teaching the best, safest way to learn the art of professional wrestling. Hit up their Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or email admin at threecountfitness.com now to register your interest, and we thank them so much for supporting the show. Oh, you can't make chicken salad out of chicken shit. People is as people does, that's all there is to it. Put a square pig in a round hole, just never seems to fit. And you can't make chicken salad out of chicken shit. Welcome to Making Chicken Salad, the Wrestle Radio Australia podcast, where we talk all things international wrestling. Today we've got a very special episode uh, because just over the past week we've had AEW Grand Slam four hours of massive pay-per-view quality AEW shows broadcast live on TV and Dynamite and Rampage from New York. So we couldn't help but get on here and talk about them. So joining me, as always, best manager ever, Todd Eastman. Todd, how you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm a bit sleepy, but I'm fine. Thank you. Um, Finally got you up. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Sorry about that. No, you're all good, mate. I was uh, at Venom Pro Wrestling last night for people that, that that are listening to this. So I'm a bit dusty this morning. And uh, I, I hear that you were a bit mean to Wayne. So uh, I got a revenge for Wayne today on the podcast. Is anytime I've given you shit, it's for Wayne. I was appropriately disciplinarian to Wayne. Sure. For sure. his actions. Show you before, before we get started though, mate, I just want to say... Um, over the last couple of episodes, you've done a great job in hosting the show. So thank you very much for doing that, mate. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for uh, for letting Bring me be on the feed to host it. And, uh, you know, but saying nice things won't get you any credits when we start <laughs> later in the Throwing show. Throwing you off. Oh, yeah, no. yeah, that's exactly right. So let's get straight into it. Um, Dynamite and Rampage, both Grand Slam events. And, I mean, let's start with what they started with, Brian and Omega kicking off the show on AEW Dynamite, going to a 30-minute time limit draw. Um, The reaction to this match has been huge. Meltzer's given it five stars. It's Daniel Bryan's first Meltzer five-star match. Um, I thought it was fantastic. I thought that it's a great finish that keeps both of them hot because you don't want to have Omega losing to a new guy, but you also don't necessarily want Brian to beat him because then straight away you need to move that into a title feud. Whereas at the moment, we know that they're on a similar level. We think Brian can beat Omega, but we don't know for sure that there's going to be that rematch. What did you think of it, Todd? Yeah, well, and Omega also put a tweet out afterwards just going, doing the whole Rocky line, ain't going to be no rematch. So. Um, I, I loved it. I thought it was a great match. Uh, it's very shocking to me that that was the first time Brian Danielson ever got a five star. That's wild, from, isn't it? Especially from someone who they named their best technical wrestler award after. You would think that's, um, and especially like the matches he had in WWE. Some of those matches uh, made, were amazing. So I was like, Absolutely it, incredible. it really leans into knowing where Meltzer's bias is when you see that's that exactly sort of right but um as as for like that you talked about the finish and all that i honestly think that they screwed up their time cues on that finish because if you notice it was like after the bell when he locked in the the label lock i think that was supposed to be locked in about 10 seconds before and you think and the bell was supposed to go during the label lock yeah 100 i 100 think that he because that would have mean that he had him in the lock the bell rings. He thinks he's won the match where he hasn't because it's a time old, like time limit draw, like thing. And I, I thought that that was where they might go with it. Like when the one minute announcement or whatever it was came through on the speakers, I was like, Oh, Brian's going to lock in the little bell lock. And then the bell will ring. Um, mm-hmm. I actually liked that. They were just trading strikes when the bell went, because it meant that from Omega's perspective, Brian didn't even have the upper hand when the match was over. Mm. And from Brian's perspective, if he had an extra minute on the clock, he would have locked in the label lock. 
Yeah. So oh, I, I love yeah. that there's both sides to it. I think it was really good. But more importantly, that whole match, the back and forth was fantastic. Massive impact. I thought both guys were doing absolutely excellent work. We saw um, Danielson come back with the, you know, I've got five and all of that great st- I thought it was an absolutely ripping match start to finish um, regardless of the ending. Yeah. Do you know what I, I would have loved though, is that they, they were trading off and the bell goes and they just keep trading and keep trading a trip to the point where the, the locker room empties and that's what splits them up. So there's no yeah. real, like nobody got the upper hand at all. Like he didn't get that label lock in. He didn't like the, um, didn't hit the one wing danger, all of that deal you were still not seeing it. So you still could have kept teasing it. Like Omega could have said, you never got it on me. And yep. you was like, well, you never hit me with this. You know what I mean? That's, that's something I might've, if it was me with the pencil, what I mean? Like, I just want you guys to keep trying. Like one of my favorite things to see trading off was, and this is very old, well, not very old school, but old school ish was um, Greg, the hammer Valentine and Ronnie Garvin had a feud in WWF. And when they traded off punches, it was amazing because everything looked crisp and they, it just looked like yep. two guys that were that mad at each other. They were just throwing bones. And if I'd have seen that for the end, like if you're like a flurry of punches to each other and then ding, 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 and they're still going and the rest trying to break it up. And next thing you know, all the rest come out to try and split them up. And then like some of the, the click has to come out and, and break them up and all of that sort of stuff. And then it's like, you've got a real, like they can go to break while they're emptying out the ring. Yep. So when they come back, so, like, what a wild scene. Cannot wait to see a rematch. Unbelievable. Definitely. But I think that the way they went, see, if they went that way, then you've got to go to rematch, right? Mm. Whereas well, the way really, that they- he can still say, you didn't beat me. Mm. Move on. Like Omega can. And then Brian's yeah. got a real thing where like, well, you didn't beat me either, man. And yeah. then they've got that ongoing niggle. I agree. But I personally am hoping that they actually split Brian and Omega for a little while after this. And they keep reminding us of the fact that Omega couldn't defend, couldn't beat Brian, couldn't put him away in the half hour. But um, I'll, I'll tell you what I would love to see. And this is, I was reading up in the NWA rule book, uh, the, the classic one. Um, Casual my reading. mate and I were doing it. Yeah, no, it was fantastic. <laughs> But we were looking at, you know, just these old school rules. And one of them was about um, title defense. So, you know, how you can't lose your title on a count out. You can't lose your title on a disqualification. Uh, According to the old NWA rules, and this is something I would love to see Kenny Omega do. If there's a two out of three falls match and it goes to time, then the title doesn't change hands. Even if there was only one fall and it was the challenger winning it. Let's let's do that. Let's have a wow. two out of three falls match with a one hour time limit where Brian locks in the label lock at 59 minutes, gets the tap. He's got one pinfall. The one hour time limit rings. Brian's the only person with a point on the board. But Omega goes, no, you didn't win the two out of three falls match. I've still got the belt. Mm. That's, think about that's that, a finish I want to say. That is a really good finish. But the hard thing about that is they're not the NWA. Yeah. You know what I mean? It would have to be like yeah, the AWA exactly right. rules state. And then everyone would be like, no one's ever seen the AWA rules. How are we ever yeah, supposed to? <laughs> but see, those anyway, two, that's just me. Those, like a question, because being that you read the rule book. Yeah. In those NWA rules, was it over the top rope and disqualification? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I just wondered. <laughs> I wondered if it still was. Yeah. Or not. yeah. I mean, I, I was reading an old version of the rules to see, you know, classic yeah, yeah, yeah. rules so i don't know yeah. if it's been updated since then but well anyway well, moving while, on from that for a while there even in like wcw when bill watts took over he changed oh, cowboy some of the yeah yeah he changed some of those where like you couldn't do a move off the top rope and also if you purposely threw your opponent over the top rope you were disqualified that's, that's right. aiming for intentional harm but yeah. if it was not intentional and you accidentally sent them over the top that was fine and then but they were doing over finishes with, with it and yeah you went over with them or yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. But through the I mean, middle's fine and yeah, it's yeah, fine. bizarre. Anyway, uh, so after the Brian Omega match, which by the way, if you're listening or watching to this podcast and you haven't seen Brian Omega, 
you can come back and catch this podcast later. You should go watch that match. <laughs> um, after that, we had CM Punk cut a promo uh, on Team Taz, obviously with a match against Powerhouse Hobbs set for Rampage, uh, which led into MJF versus Brian Pillman. I thought putting a promo there to uh, let MJF and Pillman have a minute so they didn't have to immediately follow Brian Omega was probably a good call. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, a punk promo is a punk promo. I don't care at this point um, because... <laughs> wow, punk's... Bloom came off the rose very quick there. <laughs> very, very quick. And, like, I still think he's a good promo, but I don't care if he's cutting a promo for a match against Powerhouse Hobbs that he's going to have on TV in five days' time. You know what I mean? If he's mm. building to a match with a big-name star at a big event, great. But cutting a five-minute promo on Powerhouse Hobbs, whatever, I don't care. Mm. Your thoughts? Um, well, see, the whole idea is to try and raise Powerhouse Hobbs' name up a bit there. So I'm guessing from your, like, that that from your perspective is telling me that that's not working. I, lo- I love Hobbs and I've loved Hobbs for a long time. Like, I, yeah. I love a, a no-nonsense Powerhouse. I like what Team Taz is doing. But um, I don't think having him lose to Punk is going to do that for me. And, like, yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. And like, yeah, it was a competitive match. But I don't think that, you know, everyone in AEW has competitive matches. There's not a lot of squashes. Mm. So Unless that's, it's YouTube. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, like I said, I'm not watching YouTube. Because if it's on YouTube, that means that it matters less than... Santana and Ortiz and the Lucha Brothers versus Hardy Family Office. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I, so if it matters less than that, I'm not going to go out of my way to watch it. it it's funny you say that because I had a, um, I had a discussion with a guy online um, because they were like, "Why are you always critical of AEW?" And, that, and I, I literally said, "Because I pay for everything I watch for yep. AEW. I'm not like I'm from Australia, and in Australia we pay for." We pay to watch Dynamite. We pay to watch Rampage. So I feel entitled to be able to go, well, this is what I didn't like about it because I'm paying for this. And if I continue to not like things, I'm going to not pay for them anymore. Yep. And it's... That's exactly it's, right. It's, it's, yeah. That, that's the thing. And, um, and that like, means that if Dynamite and Rampage are a premium product, I expect that to be the best content that they've got. Yes. Right? And, but... Uh, uh, also, too, I heard, I listened to something the other day. It's, it's something I'm going to start listening to more. It's this guy, he does, um, it's called WrestleNomics. I don't know if you've heard of it. but oh, he's, it um, sounds like me. He's, he's Brandon Thurston's his name. And he goes through all the, the ratings and everything of the shows and explains the numbers and the, why they're doing this sort of thing. And then I only caught a real small glimpse of this. And he was almost saying that Dynamite need to have some bad shows so when they have the good shows, people are going to know that this was a good show. If they keep having constantly good shows and then they have the one bad show, that's when... It looks like a disaster rather than the good shows looking like good shows. Yes, that's exactly right. And I was like, oh, that's good an point. interesting take. Yeah. Anyway, uh, MJF Pillman. Uh, I love MJF. I will not stop talking about how I think he's the best heel in wrestling today. Um I, I think he's absolutely superb. Uh, Pillman, I, I don't mind Brian Pillman Jr. I think he's uh, I think he's a good young wrestler. He's got a great look. He's obviously got the name working for him. Um, but yeah, I thought this match was a good showcase for MGF, MJF being an asshole. Uh, what was your thoughts on it? Um, that's you're exactly right with that. My other my only other thing was is like it did nothing for Brian Pillman Jr. The lead up and then the actual thing, the way they led it up was like MJF constantly shitting on Pillman and Pillman never really getting the upper hand on him, never really getting to like beat on him and or get his hands on him. So you would think that the, the way that they did that, the, the final match would have been Pillman finally getting his like, Revenge and MJF finally getting his come up, and which really makes no sense in the way that the storyline was going, because like right. and like I, I think that losing. MJF can get his comeuppance and still win. You know what I mean? Because he is a heel, he is a douchebag, and if he gets the tar beaten out of him all match and gets like 
properly embarrassed and made to pay for the things that he said. And then at the last minute, he grabs a squirrel hold and he, you know, throws Julia Hart in the way of a move and then, you know, does some dastardly stuff to end up winning. Then he can still win while Pillman gets to put the beat down on him. Um, I think that it was a bit more of a back and forth than it maybe should have been if we want Pillman to look good at this point. But I do think MJF winning is the right call because who do, who does MJF lose to? I can't think of... I know that he lost to uh, Jericho once out of their 60-something matches, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, like, MJF doesn't really lose to people. Mm. And he, I think he lost to, you know, Cody once. So I'm, I'm really happy for MJF to be staying, you know, be one yeah. of the big fish. And Here's I don't think it hurts Pillman to lose, but I think it hurts Pillman to not get in good offense. Here's the thing, right? You said, like, MJF never loses. Like, he never loses in matches. But those lead-ups with Jericho, Jericho was beating the shit out of him left, right, and center before yep. the matches. Like, he got his head put in a fucking toilet. That's true. And sw- he, like, copped a swirly off, off bloody Jericho. So he did all that. With this Perlman thing, he didn't. It was no. always like, I'm going to call your mother a meth head. I'm going to talk to your dad in hell, which was like, it was all great material. Was, oh, don't get great me wrong. Promo, I'm, but- yeah, I'm not at all, like, shitting on that. But Perlman never got his hands on him. Every time he did, no. he got cut off and got beaten, which is fine if at the end of that you're going to put that baby face over. Because it's sort of I, like- I wonder if, and maybe this is just because I like MJF so much that this is my hope. I wonder if we're going to go more long term where MJF is awful to good young guys and then beats them continually for a few months. And then someone steps up to put the bully in his place. So it's possible that there's something more long-term going on, but yeah, I would have liked to have seen Pillman get a little bit of revenge. Well, going along that lines, who would you pick as that, that guy to put the bully in his place? When you're thinking of young talent in AEW, because like you could say a Dante Martin, but when Dante's brother is back, that's they'll, they'll go back to doing their tags. It's do. the same guy that I say every time, it's the same guy that I say every time. It's the guy who I think is going to be world champion in three years. It's Jungle Boy. Hmm. Okay. I can, I can see that. But Jungle Boy is sort of like, they're, they're sort of pointing in towards Adam Cole. I mean, like they've got a match next week yep. on Dynamite. So, And if that, if that takes a month to pay off, then that's a month where MJF can ruin another young guy and yeah. be a bully. You know, and that then... Number three, you know, do your rule of three. Number three is Jungle Boy, mm. who goes, no, we're not going to take this, and beats him. That's my only, anyway. That's yeah, no, 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 no. My only come, my only argument, or my only, my only roadblock in that is promos. Like Jungle Boy can barely string a few words together in a promo, which like it hurts him. And I think they're really sort of leading slowly towards Christian turning on them. Yeah, I think so. But um, I also think that the way you get Jungle Boy to learn to do promos is to put him up against someone like MJF Mm. and have MJF talk through, all right, here's what... Because I genuinely think, even though MJF is so young, he... He cuts promos like he's been doing it for 30 years. He probably like has. The guy knows, <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> he knows what he's doing. And I think that you, you need to put someone like Jungle Boy in a position where he needs to cut promos and he needs yeah. to cut good promos. And, and he's got the people there supporting him to cut good promos. But it's, I mean, looking at him in the ring, it's it's the one thing he doesn't have yet to make yeah. a world champion. And it's promos. really strange because... Like, he got his dad's looks. He just didn't get his dad's, like, ability to speak. <laughs> I know. It's bizarre. But he's got the look. His in-ring is incredible. Um, he's The gimmick is fun. Yeah, I just... Got if we can get Jungle, girlfriend. Good yeah, one. if we can get Jungle Boy practicing those mic skills with people who are good on the mic, he's a world champion. It's done. Mm. It's done and dusted. Yeah. No, you know, I, I, I think don't disagree, I though. think MJF and Jungle Boy is the future of the world championship scene in AEW. That's mm. so anyway. Uh, so that's our feelings on MJF and Pillman. Moving on to something that we'll uh, 
we'll have a little bit to talk about here. <laughs> yeah, settle in, folks. <laughs> Cody Rhodes versus Malachi Black. Okay, I'll cover a few things first because I know you've got a big rant coming, Tom. Mm-hmm. So here's my thoughts. Number one, I love everything Tommy End does. I can watch that man wrestle for hours on end. Brilliant. There's little touches that I loved. I loved him hitting the... Um, I'm going to call it Black Mass. I can't remember what the kick's called now, but hitting his finish, Cody gets belted so hard he falls out of the ring. Black immediately shoots out of the ring, tries to pick him up to put him back in for the cover, but he's dead weight, can't lift him, goes back in to try to wait for the count out. Great work. Absolutely fantastic. Um, There's a couple of things that I hated. One, we made Arn Anderson look like an old idiot. Uh, There was no reason for him to try to go around the ring post on the apron, which he fell down doing, and then had to get back up in order to get hit by Cody running the ropes. Dumb, unnecessary, totally stupid. We don't need Arn doing that. Um, Brandy's back, and Brandy's getting in the ring and giving uh, Black the finger for no reason and i don't understand why the thing that absolutely incensed me and i i could barely focus on the rest of the match Mm -hmm. once it happened right is uh there was a a pinning exchange where cody was pinning air quotes malachi black with black's shoulders on cody's thighs and the ref was counting it 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 absolutely sent me. I could not stand it. It was, you know, they did that thing where one rolls the other up and they flip it into rolling the other one up. And Black's head was on the mat, but his shoulders were on Cody's thighs. Don't Mm. count it, ref. No, exactly. That that just sent me mental. Sometimes Um, I think the refs in AEW just do exactly what the, the wrestlers are telling to do and not their actual jobs. Yeah. And it's something that like... Poor Jimmy Corderas gets ripped over it because they, they 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 go after him going, you're so anti-AEW, blah, blah, blah. He's just calling it because he's a 20-year referee veteran. Like, he's refereed exactly. stuff like Undertaker and Edge. Like, he knows what he's talking about. And when he says stuff like, why are they doing this? They shouldn't be counting it. Like, you're ruining the integrity of a referee when you do this sort of thing. He's dead on. Like, you, a referee is supposed to call a match as they see it down the middle. Like... As a, this is a side note, right? Last night we, I had a match where I managed um, my guy Tiamat against Alex Shepard. Now there was a spot in the match where Alex was supposed to be hanging over the ropes and Tiamat distracts the ref and I slap Alex. Tiamat forgot to distract the ref and the ref's looking at me. So I'm just looking dead at Shep and like not moving my lips, but just going, I can't hit you. He's looking right at us. I can't hit you. He's looking right at us. Because if I had that referee would have to disqualify me because he's seen it, like flat out seen me like interfere in the match. The whole idea of it is for them to not see because that enrages the fans and yada, yada, yada. When you do, if I had just slapped him and just going, that's not the spot, you can't disqualify me, that ruins that referee's credibility straight away. And just like you said, when you're counting pins where shoulders aren't on the mat, that ruins the referee's integrity. I love the thing where you see a referee doing that whole, you can't see it if you're listening to his yeah, podcast. pushing the hand under the shoulder. Yeah, and telling him his shoulders aren't down, his shoulders aren't down, I'm not counting it. And then having him move that way. That to me, that that looks like a contest. That's a contest. Because a referee saying, I'm a car counter, it's not a legal pin. That's not a legal pin. But yes, to go with your point, that's exactly, I, I agree with you completely. So that was, that was my biggest bugbear in the match. And the finish came when uh, we had Malachi Black spit black mist into the eyes of Cody Rhodes while the referee was distracted and uh, roll him up for the pin. Uh, take it away, Todd. <laughs> my notes for this, and you've seen my notes because I actually put them in our rundown because I, I couldn't yet get a thing up quickly. It's literally like fucking Brandy, silly and made Arn look like a fool. So it's basically exactly. I had, there was no reason for her to slide into that ring, mimic him doing the cross legs, giving him the double fingers without him getting up and kicking the shit off her, like like kicking her head off her shoulders. There was that completely ruined. Well, not didn't ruin, but it like hurts his mystique. It hurts his gimmick. 
when she goes in and mocks him like that, when it's not, she had no part in this match. He was never going to get her. Like, you know, I hate to break kayfabe here, guys, but it's planned. There was never a planned spot where he is eventually going to kick her. So why would you do this spot? And just, just to give her a bit of shine. And literally, when she walked out at that start, I went, oh, because I knew that some silly shit was going to happen because it always does. There's always one point in a Cody Rhodes match when Brandy is ringside where she has to make it about her. And you want to yeah. hear my, my controversial thought here, Todd? What's that, my friend? I think that Brandy might be the best heel manager that they've got right now because uh, Cody is doing an excellent job as a heel. And I think Brandy is getting us all riled up and angry at her and Cody. And honestly, if you look at the way that this match went, number one, everyone loves black. Everyone loves watching him work, but the match was set out as if Cody was the heel. And not only that, he's coming out in Homelander cosplay, which is a character (laughs) from the boys, which is a direct reference to a guy who, He's acting like the good guy, thinks he's the good guy, but he's very clearly the bad guy. And I think that the story they're telling right now is Cody might be the top heel in the company right now. Mm. I just, yeah, it just baffles me. It just, and the whole thing with Arn, I'm like, why is he getting up on the apron right now in this part of the match? And then why is he like, if you're going to, I don't know. I honestly don't know if that bump was intentional, him falling off. If the bump was was... intentional for him to fall off, then why did he get back up and take another bump? That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm thinking maybe he got up on the wrong side of the ring. He's like, oh, shit, I'm on the wrong side of the ring here. I better move over. I actually noticed Cody point to the side of the ring that he needed to be on. Uh, Okay. So So it seems like like Arn's gotten up on the wrong side of the ring. Cody's pointed to where he needs to be. Arn's decided instead of getting down and getting back up, he's going to go around the ring post. He's couldn't too, quite get around. He's a bit too girthy for that now. That's right. Um, so yeah, that's I I thought it would have been a great match if not for a couple of really, really dumb things. Mm. And um, it's really cemented in my mind that Cody's working heel. And look, I'm the, the problem here for me is that Arn Anderson is my favorite wrestler. And I hate what they're doing to him because they're making him look like a bumbling old fool. Like he has never once helped. The only time he ever helped in a match was, and I'm thinking here, Sean Spears. Yep. That's how long ago. He hit the spine buster. And like the best spine buster ever from a man that age. Yeah. I, I don't know why like look i love the brain busters but i don't think he's doing anything no other it's... than being being uh an extra manager there so that cody's coming out with multiple managers which is great heel move mm, mm. but you it's know? like if, if you're gonna be a heel don't be a shades of gray heel just come out and heal it up yeah yeah like anyway just do it don't have uh, don't have celebrity friends that's it that come out and help you you know That's what I mean? It. It's like, just do it. Just be a heel. FTR versus Darby Allen and Sting. Number one, man, Darby Allen can move. Love seeing that guy go. Uh, FTR are such a good tag team. Cannot speak any time they are in a tag match. It's excellent. But the, the headline for this match was that Sting is working his ass off. And that man is older than wood. Like... It, it is amazing that Sting can still go. I don't necessarily want to see him wrestle the way he's wrestling because I'm constantly thinking of how fragile he is. I'm not wanting him to hit the other guy. I'm wanting him to tag out so that he doesn't hurt himself, which is not what you want from your face. Um, but I think that obviously when you've got opponents like FTR, it makes it easy to have a good match mm-hmm. because those guys could get a good tag team match out of a broom. But, um, yeah, I think it was really cool to see Sting be the highlight of a match on offense. Yeah. And I thought it was a great coffin drop at the end. We're getting that thing FTR do that I love where they grab each other's hands while one of them is in a submission. Love it. Um, 
Yeah. Cool match. What did you reckon? Yeah. Um, that to me cemented in my mind what I've known for a long time. That is FTR are the best tag team in the world because you can put them in with anybody, any style, any way, and they will get a good match out of it. Like I don't remember seeing a bad match from those guys. They, no. took a, they took a dude with Sting and made him look like he was 20 years younger because they planned everything like, this is what you'll do here. This is what we can do here. We'll set this up here. You'll stop from the Stinger Splash and then hit me into a chair so you're not taking any real like punishment. That The biggest thing I was worried about with Sting's first thing was he was with Brian Cage. And Brian Cage has a tendency to just muscle somebody around because he can. It doesn't yeah. really mean anything to him. And for someone who I think is as fragile as Sting might be, that worried the hell out of me. But to see him in the ring with, and unfortunately he can't do it all the time because it's a like tag team FTR sort of deal. That's who he needs to be facing. That's who Sting needs to be facing on the regular. Guys that are savvy veterans who will get the best out of what he make they can accentuate his strengths and hide his weaknesses. And that's, that's what FTR do with every tag team they face. And like, I, I seriously think they're being misused somewhat in AEW. I love that. And you're absolutely right. We call them savvy veterans. Do you know how old Dax and Wheeler are? Yeah, they're not. They just look, they're like 30 and 34. Yeah. It's like they've been doing it for decades. They are yeah. so good. Yeah, so I like I've been a fan of um of Dax since his nickname was the mechanic in NXT. Yep. Because again, Arn Anderson is my favorite wrestler. As soon as I saw him, I said, That's young Arn Anderson. Yeah. And I, I've always loved his work. And then when he joined with Cash or Dash or whatever he wants to be called now, um, that was like that's a perfect fit of a tag team. And that was, and it shows like they are hands down my favorite tag team to watch in wrestling today. Like modern wrestling, yeah. I will watch them versus everybody because they can have an amazing match against the Lucha Bros. They can have an amazing match against the Bucks. They can take on a team like like Darby and, and um, Sting Dang, yeah. and make them look great because that's what their job is to make other teams look great. And, and they do it every time. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's a shame. Even when they win, they make the other team look great. Exactly. They, they make the team like, it makes them look like, and they do exactly what old tag teams used to, all brilliant tag teams like the Rock and Rolls. The, well, not so much the Rock and Rolls because the Rock and Rolls were faces, but Midnight Express, Arn and Tully, they make them look like there's no way these guys are going to beat this strong face tag team because look at them, they're beating the shit out of them and they pull the victory out by some means of distraction or or that because they are just that they're, they're as good as the guys, but they're willing to cheat to win. That's it. And that's what I love. I love that tag team FTR for me, best tag team in the world. What is it? Uh, win if you can lose, lose if, you, if must, you must, but always, always, always cheat. cheat. Perfect. Yes. All right. And uh, final match. The main event was a women's title match between Britt Baker and Ruby Soho. Uh, personally, a little bit disappointed expected more i've got a feeling that you've got the same feeling here todd yeah yeah it was i was it's strange because i know it, it sounds sexist but i really most times i don't expect to have a lot out of some of these the women matches on AEW just because i don't rate a lot of the the women workers in that i think it's not that i don't rate women workers anyone who knows me knows that my favorite wrestler in australia currently is jessica troy so it's like I it's not like I don't like women wrestlers. And I was really looking forward to this because after the six man and all that, I'm like Ruby is really gonna help this division by lifting it up. But that match just wasn't it for me. It didn't, I didn't feel like it hit the way um Rosa and Britt did. Like Rosa and Britt was yeah, a great match. Absolutely, it was a great match. And um, I just I do want to talk about the women quickly because you're mm-hmm. absolutely right. I, I do feel like and let's quickly touch on the women's match that was on Rampage here and do, you know, two in one hit. It was uh, Penelope Ford and Anna Jay. Penelope Ford winning off distraction from Ally on the outside. Ally, the bunny, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> keep calling her Ally. Uh, the bunny distracted the ref through brass knuckles in. Um, brass knuckles were used and then uh, got the pinfall. And the save was made by Ty Conti after a beatdown at the end. 
which turned into a bit of a brawl and then Dark Order came out. Dark Order's reuniting. Maybe they're not actually reuniting. Um, yeah, and I, I'm just continually disappointed by the women's matches and also it seems like the women's matches are filling the women's match slot on an AEW card because there's one every show, no matter mm-hmm. what. We mm-hmm. get one. If you look at SmackDown this past week, which we'll talk about soon, SmackDown had two women's matches and two women's in-ring segments in a two-hour show, Mm. right? And on a two-hour rampage, we got one women's match, which ended in a way that is progressing a men's storyline. Yeah, because that was was really, that that match on rampage just looked like the chance to get everybody on TV in the end of that. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's let's get out best friends and, or not best friends, but Orange Cassidy and Chris Statlander and Dark Water. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looked like. Yeah, um, so I'm I'm not thrilled about the state of women's matches on AEW. I've said it before. I'll keep saying it. I Especially when you've got so many women on the indies who will go and work, right? Mm. Well, Layla Hirsch like, is there. Yeah, you got, you know what I mean? You got Thunder Rosa. You've got Thunder Rosa. You've got Layla Hirsch. You've got, look at all the people. Like, let's just go back a couple of weeks when we talked about NWA Empower. What an excellent, excellent show that was that shows if you want to grab women from the indies and put on a show, there is a massive number of them. Mm. Just not Chelsea Green. Well. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just like, I don't know if I, did I show you that clip that I, that I saw? And I, I took. A I don't video think of it. so. I'll, I will show it to you. And it's a spot where, like, she's trading off with Allison K, and she does rapid these rapid punches that look like they were supposed to hit her in the boob, but they were missing her by this much. And it was like ten of but them, like, you know, ten of them in a row. I'm like, and she wonders why she got released. Yeah, that's it. But like, why is Serena Deeb not on shows? She's Serena injured. Deeb is an AW talent. Oh, she's, she's injured. injured. Yeah, she's injured at the moment. Yeah, because that was that would have been like, my argument as well. But she, yeah, I knew she was injured. There you go. See, there's there's the answer I didn't know. But like, why isn't Diamante on shows? Mm. Like, there's so many women that you could just grab. You know, we know. I know that Kylie Ray left, so maybe that's an uh, some maybe that shows the backstage for the women. They're not getting what they and she left early on in AEW. Yeah. When AW was saying we're going to have a big women's division, so I think yeah, but I like Kylie Ray is deals with like um, mental issues, unfortunately. Yeah, mental so, health, and stuff that there, that's so. that's what it seems because she went there, then she went to Impact, and then she left Impact because of that same thing, and now she's with NWA, I think it is. I think she's independent and she's working with NWA. Yeah. Like, I but, don't think she's contracted there. But, but but before that, like, she left AEW, then retired, then came back for Impact, then left that, and then... But this is what we're saying. There's so many women out there who are doing things. Yeah. So no, why, yeah. There are plenty why of, are we only getting two matches? There is plenty of women's talent out there. It's just a matter of, like, using them more. Like, I don't... And this might sound terrible. I don't believe anything that Riho does. No. no, I like yeah. I like um, uh, is it Ito Ito, Maki Ito? Yes, I like her. I think she's great. I think she's don't, don't of... get me started, Todd. Yeah. Don't get me started on Maki. Love her, but yeah, I think she's great, and uh, she should be figured in a little bit more. And then you still you've got Nyla Rose, which is their version of Nia Jax, and it's like there is a lot of women there that can put on decent matches. Nyla like Nyla Jax, probably Nyla Rose, Nyla Jax. Nyla Rose probably needs to do the same thing that, that Nyla Jax does. Nyla Jax does that look after her opponent a bit more. But there's plenty of talent there. And it, it surprises me because I thought that Kenny Omega was supposedly leading or in charge of this women's division. So I, I would yeah. have thought that it would be a bit more. But he's also come on record to say that he hopes that they get more TV time. So clearly he's not making the decisions there. Mm. Mm. But like, yeah, for me, when Jamie Hayter is standing on the outside of the ring to manage someone, that is an absolute indictment. Why yeah. is Jamie Hayter not wrestling? It, and it I like, seems ridiculous. I like, I like Anna Jay. I think Anna Jay's got a lot of potential. Yep. But I think Penelope Ford is probably better standing on the outside watching a match. 
than she is. I, I would love to see Penelope Ford get better. I would love to see her get the opportunities. I don't want Penelope Ford to be part of the only women's match on a two-hour card. Yeah. Yeah. And that, anyway. and that's the thing, too. Like, you've got... um, uh, What's Anna Jay's friend's name? The Brazilian girl. Uh, Ty um, Conti. Ty Conti. Ty Conti is one of those ones... Is one of the very, in my opinion the very rare few that got cut from WWE in that, it, like that level that got cut from WWE, that was a missed opportunity for them. I, Ty Conti from the start when she was in, cause she was in one of the uh, May Young classics. Mm. And I thought she was absolutely like for how green she was really, really good yeah. and had the look and, had the moves and yeah i think that there's a lot of potential there but again the way you work on that potential is by having a couple of women's matches on the show and they just yeah. don't and part of that, that's this overbloated men's roster that we keep talking about they've got too many people that they're trying to cram onto tv and the result is that they're just not doing things mm. but let's see that's the thing like they cut her and i think with the same class that they cut her they cut nemeth they cut um what's the other guy the the brazilian dude the big dude. He's part of the wingman as well. Oh, um, yeah, no, I can't remember. Yeah, that guy. That those two, they don't where they are right now is probably where they are. Yeah. And they'll they would never get any like but higher. Conti's ceiling seems to be much higher. But Conti is one that they definitely missed out on. Like I do, yeah. if anyone says to me, Oh, you missed out on Ryan Nemeth, I'm like, no, you're just not no. seeing. Like he's Dolph Ziggler if Dolph Ziggler just decided not to really work on what he was doing. Yep. Bingo. All right. So that's uh that's us talking about dynamite. We're both yeah. a little bit disappointed with Brit versus Ruby. We should mention uh Brit did win that match, coming off a distraction, um, locking in the uh, lock jaw as the finish mm. and getting the tap like, out. It, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a shit match. It just wasn't. No, it was. It was, it was an match. okay match, but we. I think we both expected more. Yeah, I, I just. I don't want them to hang their head on going. We had our biggest dynamite ever, and we had ladies as the main event. And I said no. You, that, that kind of like that was almost a write off match at yeah. the end because and you and it was put there because you can't send the fans home on a non finish of Brian Omega. No. Well, and also the way that it was structured was because for TV time in America, the first hour of a the show, there's not that you get many, less ad breaks. You get less ad breaks, yeah. so they didn't want to have an ad break during the Danielson Omega because otherwise that would have been what ended the show. Yeah, so that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, so that's Dynamite. Let's go through Rampage with a bit more pace because we have spent a long time on this. Yes. So uh, CM Punk beating Powerhouse Hobbs. I thought the match was fine. Um, you know, gave gave Hobbs a lot of CM offense. Punk. He did. And I thought Hobbs looked really good, um, but it was kind of what I expected it to be. And CM Punk back in trunks. Back in trunks. I hate it. <laughs> I, I think. <laughs> wow. Why are you, why is he bowing to the pressure of these fans who are complaining just because they're attached to what they remember from 10 years ago? The pants looked great. Do you know anyway. what? Like, I had a discussion with one of the one of the boys about it, and um, I think it was the fact that he didn't want to look. Uh, I think he was a bit sub self conscious about his legs for that first match, and uh, maybe yep. look a little bit bigger. And when you're against Darby Allen, you don't want to look as skinny as Darby Allen. So yep. he wore the with Hobbs. There was no worries about that because Hobbs is a massive dude. You could just Hobbs wear the huge. trunks. Yeah, you can wear the trunks yeah. and you're fine. But yeah, I it thought it felt, was really good. It felt to me like bowing to the pressure of the fans who saw pants and went, that's not the CM Punk I know. Yeah. I thought Punk nearly killed himself on that runner off the top rope. Oh, so yeah. It looked like he just dropped like a rock. And so I think he maybe has to watch it that. But uh, it was a good match. But it was just a, it was, good match. It was a TV match. It was a good match. And it, it's showing that uh, that ring rust is coming off Punk quick. Mm. I but think what there, was, there was a bit of little bit of rust in the first match with Derby, but um, in a couple of matches time, he is going to be back at full punk. Mm. But what does it say about him when like half the crowd were chanting send hook for the whole match? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. You know, um, it's come off the rose, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, Super Click versus Jurassic Express and Christian Cage. Uh, Super Click with the win in this one, building towards, as we said earlier, Jungle Boy versus... Uh, Adam Cole. Adam Cole. Um, I thought the match was good. It's a typical six-man match with the Bucks in it. Lots of chaos. Um, 
Christian Christian Cage can still go. It always amazes me the move set that he's got. I think he's really crisp. I think he's really good, especially for how long he's been doing it. Um, I think he looks great. But again, this is a six man chaos match. Yeah, it's a PWG reunion show, pretty much. Yep. I love Jungle Boy. I can't get enough of him. But you know that match is what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Um. I'll let you take away this next match and tell us what you think before I start complaining. Uh, Men of the Year versus Chris Jericho and Jake Hager. What do you reckon? I thought it was great because it meant that Chris Jericho wasn't on commentary. So um, there's an up. There's a chicken salad for you, mate. Um, (laughs) You say wearing your Lionheart shirt. Because this is old Chris Jericho. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I didn't like, I didn't hate it. Because I think men of the year are there to be what they're there to be. They're just there to be a workman tag team that helps other tag teams get over. And so, like they're one of those guys that talk their way, like they let Dan Lebert talk their way into getting their asses kicked. And it's obviously leading to more things because of the way the finish was. So, and like then the other upside is like, I don't know, but maybe we're going to get Jorge Masvidal in AEW for a match. It, it, it's a bit disappointing that that match will probably be against Chris Jericho, but it's still cool Chris to Jericho's see. Chris Jericho's safe hands, I guess. Yeah, oh, that, that's exactly what it'd be. You can't put him in there with, with Jake Hager. As much as Jake Hager's got MMA experience, um, you just can't, you can't do that. It surprises me very much that if it does happen... That Sorry, the- I, I, I will talk about the finish just so everyone who didn't yeah, yeah. know what we're talking about... Uh, after the match, Lambert was on the outside celebrating. Jericho and Hager brought him in. We're going to beat him up. Um, members of America's top team just started flooding out of the crowd. Uh, Junior Dos well, Santos, Peg Van Zandt. Slowly walking out no, of the no, crowd. No, slowly walking out <laughs> of the crowd. I was like, Jesus Christ, how long are you going to leave him in Get the there, boys. <laughs> Junior Dos Santos, Paige Van Zandt, Austin Vanderford, uh, Andre Arlovsky, uh, Dalton Roster, Jorge Masvidal, Surrounding the ring, they get in, they beat up on Jericho and Hager. Uh, Paige Van Zant works Jericho's guts over uh, with some punches, and then Masvidal hits a running knee to Jericho's head. I don't know, um, like so that's the big finish there. I don't know if if they were worked punches or not, but Olofsky and Hager's trade off was great. I was like, I don't know, because I was watching it going, I don't know if they worked or not, but if they're not, they're, he's really good at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna have my winch. Have you winch? Go for it, mate. Because I know how much that you like and you like to do this. So go for it. It's gl- it's good that it's you for a change. I'm, you sent me. I'm done with Jericho. I'm <laughs> done with him. I don't care anymore. Right. I respect him as one of the greatest of all time. I do not need to see this flabby old man work a tag match with Jake Hager against Men of the Year. I don't care. You can't make me care. I. Honestly, I'm, I don't care about Masvidal. I don't care about Paige Van Zandt because I'm here for wrestling, so I don't follow all of the shoot fight stuff, right? I'm here for the storylines of professional wrestling, so all of those people I don't care about. And Chris Jericho, I find boring to watch. He wasn't boring 20 years ago. He was incredible 20 years ago. It's not 20 years ago. I don't want to see Chris Jericho work. I don't like uh, Hager. I just don't like him as a person. I find him boring to watch. Um, look, men of the year are perfectly fine at what they do. You're exactly right. They're there to be a mid-card tag team who gets other people looking good. Um, I like that they gave them the win. It makes them look, you know, like a good team. So when someone beats them, it's something important. Um, but I don't care. I don't need to see uh, all of these 20-something unshowered men singing Judas when Jericho comes to the ring, I'm done with it. I'm done. I don't want to see it anymore. You starting to sound like me. Jesus. Sorry about this, people. <laughs> he used You're to infecting be, me, Todd. He used to be so me. happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's move on to something else that I thought was uh, probably a waste of time, but one that I liked. Uh, so this was the Hardy family office versus... Uh, what I've dubbed the Laxa brothers because it's LAX and the Lucha brothers. So Santana and Ortiz and the Lucha brothers beating the Hardy family office, um, which was made of private party and uh, butcher and blade. Yes. So private party and butcher and blade versus Santana and Ortiz and Lucha brothers. And it was exactly what it sounds like. It was absolute chaos. Um, 
basically done under lucha rules so people were just going in and out of the matches they saw fit um man santana and ortiz and the lucha brothers have just been working together for so long at such a high level that they just perform it's absolutely excellent to see i love private party i think butcher and blade are a really good base as a tag team um so i thought that it was a fun if meaningless match the big story coming out of it was that um Matt Hardy is big money. Matt Hardy is obsessed with cutting people's hair now. So he was trying to cut the hair off a member of LAX when Orange Cassidy made the save. Um, Matt Hardy's obsessed with getting Orange Cassidy to shave his head. So he has made a match between Orange Cassidy and um, not Angelico, Jack Evans, uh, a hair versus hair match that Jack Evans was not prepared to be entered into, but he's going to. So a uh, hair versus hair match set, Orange Cassidy and Jack Evans. Um, that should be good. I like Jack Evans. I think people forget how long Jack Evans has been doing those flips for. If you go back to Wrestling Society X, he'd be doing been doing them for a long time then, and that was a decade and a half ago. So um, I got a lot of respect for Jack Evans. I got a lot of time for him. But um, yeah, again, I thought this match was fun, but nothing important. What did you think, Todd? Um well, I think Jack Evans is Botchamania's favorite wrestler. Just from the, the like the stuff he's done in AEW has been very patchy at best. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah, been because he's of, been of, he's been doing a lot of ridiculous flippy stuff and he's not a young man anymore. Yeah. Um, look, I'm just gonna say right now, I hated it for the fact. Like I didn't hate the match. Let's just uh, right out there. I didn't hate the match because the match was what it was always going to be, very luchery, very flippy, blah, blah, blah. What I didn't like was you've got supposedly two of your biggest shows in AEW's like TV history, and you've got your tag team your tag team champions in a nothing eight-man tag. Because really what was on the line there, there was nothing on the line there except for just the four, the two teams that want to beat yeah. each other. If that had yeah, ended, just, so, yeah. if that had ended somehow in instead of leading off to a stupid like mid-card hair versus hair match with a guy that wasn't involved in the match and another guy that wasn't involved in the match and instead broke down to, say, something happened to the finish there where Hardy the Hardy team went over and Lucha Bros and Santana and Ortiz got into a pull apart, that to me, that would have been money because I'd like to see Santana and Ortiz, Lucha Bros for the tag team titles. And that's where I think they're eventually going I just think they could have got there then quite easily by doing that. That's my only, but like, I didn't mind the yeah, match. I, I just thought that that, that was, that was where I would have. Out been. of curiosity, Todd, when do you reckon Jack Evans debuted? Put you on oh, the geez. spot here. What would you guess, Ben? Um, I'm trying to think because I remember watching him back in ROH days for, with um, Generation Next. So it would be early 90s. It was in. It was two thousand. He debuted, so he's oh, been okay. wrestling for twenty-one years. He's thirty-nine years old. He. It's easy to look at him and go, "Oh, young flippy guy." The dude's been doing it for no. over over twenty years. I so knew. Like I'm just. That, I'm terrible with years now because yeah, I'm yeah. I, as old as I am. I still think that two thousand wasn't too long ago. Yeah, that's exactly right. But yeah, dude, the dude's like almost forty, so. I, I understand why he's working a little bit sloppy when he's trying to do flips all the time. Mm. Anyway. So that's the thing though. Like, like if that's happening, then eliminate that out of your game. Yeah. And then go yeah, to I something agree. else. I, like I had, I had this discussion last night with, with, oh, sorry, I keep sidetracking. I had okay. this discussion last night with um, team at the guy that I, I, I manage. I was like, if you, if you can't do it a hundred percent of the time, because he did a he did a move where he sort of botched it on the on the show, and he's like, "Oh, I just had a like I I done it so many times in practice and it was fine." And I was like, "That's because you hadn't wrestled for fifteen minutes beforehand." So if you are you're not confident you can do this all the time, just eliminate that from your game until you are confident that in fifteen minutes time of full on like wrestling, you can still get up there and pull off this move. Then by all means, use it. It's much better to, to, to not try something that you don't know that you're going to pull off than take the crowd out of it for a second because that's yeah, what happens. Exactly. Yeah, that's and, right. Yeah. 
All right, we've talked about Penelope Penelope Ford beating Anna Jay, leading to a beatdown. Dark Order coming out, looking like they're reuniting, not reuniting. Okay. Where do you think this is leading? Okay. We're, we're, like, honestly, is it going to be like Wyatt comes in and reunites them or is it going to be Paige that comes back and reunites them or are they it's just going to be split off or... It's got to be building to, I think, a big feel-good Paige is back reunited spot. That's where I think it's going. But um, look, I wouldn't mind. I, I, I think it's also possible that we get half of them led by Wyatt as a heel team and the other half as a face team. Mm. Um, but I, see, I don't know if you're going that way you would think by in my mind process of elimination Wyndham would have like Evil Uno, Stu and that's sort of like a downgrade from the original Wyatt family if you know what I mean like going from a Brody Lee being his like henchman to an Evil Uno being his henchman is a bit of a drop and that's nothing it against is. Uno it's just it just is what it is no but but Brody Lee was the guy who was leading Dark Order. Yeah. So he was leading the guy who was the leader. You yeah. know, it is a downgrade. Um, For the longest time, I, I, I just think they're sleeping so much on Silver. Silver could come out and do Silver's some really great good. stuff. He is so good, so entertaining. Like, I don't know if he'll ever be a, a, a main event, main event guy, but like that mid level to, to, to upper card, like not comedy, but funny face that everyone loves like i love the dude and you know me i'm generally like very serious about like the characters i like i like yep. serious characters i love him he just makes me laugh he makes he entertains me and it makes me want to see him more especially when they do that he does that thing where he and it means yelling. that when he's doing serious stuff you care about it yeah it's when he when he does that thing there's a whole thing on youtube of him yelling anna and it's just like there's a there's somebody who's cut together every time he's made Anna J break during like um being the elites. Just be like Anna, 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 Anna. He'll do that in one take. And you see her like this going like that, and then come back up. And I love him. I it still yeah, makes me fantastic. It still makes me so mad when they did that. Uh, elimination match that they didn't put them over the Bucks, at least one of the Bucks in that elimination match. That was, and I don't watch a lot of Being the Elite, but I do, if if I see a new one go up, I scan through for his bit. Yeah. Because it's always fantastic. He's going around drunk at the moment. He uh, picked up, I can't remember who it was, but they were they were drinking some kind of yellow energy drink and he picked it up. He goes, is that drinking pee pee? And had, mmm, pee. Like, yeah. And it's it's so silly, but he's just grabbing it with both hands and getting into it and getting stuck in, and it makes it fun. Um, anyway, that was the end of the official stuff on uh, AEW Duck because sorry AEW Rampage. <laughs> after that, they had. Uh, I'm thinking of how dark it was when I, they I turned just, the lights out. I was just saying, like somebody tells that does, tells me what you thought of the show as a whole. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Um, so they turn the lights out and then they turn the lights back on to have an unsanctioned match between Eddie Kingston and John Moxley versus Lance Archer and Minoru Suzuki. Uh, we got to hear Suzuki's theme music. Thank God. People aren't going to complain about that. Um, the match was dominated by uh, Archer and Suzuki until Homicide came out, uh, freed Moxley, who had his hands duct taped behind his back, uh, Moxley hit the paradigm shift onto Suzuki onto a chair. Kingston beat the tar out of Archer, put him in a garbage can, and then wailed on it with a kendo stick uh, to get the win for Kingston and Moxley. What did you think of this one, Toddy? Um, it, it was what it was. Do you know what I didn't like? The only thing I didn't like about it was the camera angles. Like that last bit where where he's got him in the garbage can and he's hitting it with you the, and your camera cannon. angles, Tom. Well, because they give it away, they gave it away. Like the, the cam, the, they hit the he was hitting this garbage can with the kendo stick repeatedly, and they cut to an angle where you could see the stick going nowhere near where Archer was in the bin. And Archer, Archer's pretty much like you can't see me if you're not watching this on YouTube, but Archer's pretty much hands over him, like tucked into the the garbage bin, protecting himself, and it's hitting him like above where his head was. If the, if the camera angle been from the other side, you wouldn't have seen any of that. It would have just looked like you were hitting the guy when it was in the can. Exactly. That, that's my only like, thing about it. And also your baby faces 
you're in jeopardy. You shouldn't have someone come in and save you. Yep. And I don't care about homicide either. No, and um, I don't I I don't really remember, but the crowd really go that didn't know who he was. Yeah. But also too, you've got to think, and I'm I'm gonna give AEW a bit of a break here on this one. That's at the end of a four hour taping. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's good. So they'd watch four hours of stuff coming into that. So my my like one of my chicken sellers for this week was gonna be that crowd because they sat it out for the whole four hours and were pretty loud for most of it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, with that, look, we've got a couple more AEW stories to cover, but now that we've covered uh, the two big shows from Grand Slam, I think we can, uh, we'll head to a break and we'll come back and we'll talk about some more news. We'll talk about what's going in WWE and what's going on uh, around the wrestling world. So stick around. My hand, you will rise from the ashes of this world. On Saturday, October 9th. The best in Queensland pro wrestling returns. As Pro Wrestling League presents Revolution 3. Check their Facebook for details. So speaking of AEW Grand Slam, the ratings have come in 1.2 million for Dynamite, uh, which is, it's a good rating. It's not a great rating, which when you've got a match like Omega versus Danielson, I think that's probably not what they were hoping for. Is that, you got the same feeling there, Todd? Uh, Look, they, and I put this up on our our, uh, Instagram account, our, our Twitter 1.2 1.2 mil for that those, those that show is, I think, I, I, I don't think they're popping champagne in the AEW offices at the moment. Because even me, and you know how, like, I, I'm very, like, critical of AEW just because I, I, I like good wrestling and I, I, I see how much potential they have and it annoys me that, in my opinion, they're not hitting that potential of, of what they can do. Last last show we talked about us. I, I was saying if they don't hit 1. 1.5, 1. 1.4, 1. 1.3 area, that's a that's a miscue in my opinion, because of how much promotion they put into this show and how much they 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 stopped. That that was a pay per view yeah. quality. Yeah, it was. That was a pay per view quality show. And if you can only draw one point two mil for that, when the show after all out. The, the dynamite after all out outdrew that outrated that show. So it, you don't you don't want anything outrating a show that I can't imagine who was watching the one after all out but wasn't watching the one with Danielson and Omega. That yeah. it seems bizarre that that's happened, you know. And and also they they because the thing that the crutch that they always lean on was the demo was always very strong. They didn't beat Raw in the demo either. Like the demo was, and it was only 0.01. So like you give them a break on that. They, they pretty much tied with that thing, but that raw was only really, it was like one led by one match and they drew 1.7. I think it was, but this, this shows, and this is my feeling is that if you appeal to the minorities who don't feel represented in wrestling, it pays in ratings. And what we saw is Big E getting the belt is paying in ratings because there are black folks in America who feel like they are being represented on WWE and they are tuning in. Mm. Mm. And they're not necessarily being represented all that strongly in AEW at the moment. But it's it's also too, like AEW go to that core, hardcore independent wrestling base. And there's only so many of those in the country. And like it was, it was made to seem like this show was, and it was, it was a massive show. It was a massive. They sold out. They sold out Arthur Ashe Stadium. That was twenty thousand. If those twenty thousand just stayed home and watched the show, maybe the ratings might have been a bit better. But it was made to seem like when you when you look at Twitter, when you look at like your, your faith, your Facebook algorithms go towards those wrestling like groups and all that. That every man and his dog was so excited for this show. Then why was the rating so? 
so yeah, low for it. Exactly. And then you're like, oh, well, we have to wait for the DVR numbers to come in. And then that's the way. But well, you never say that before. Every other yeah. time it's like, this is great. This is awesome. We love this. Now it's like, oh, no, it's the DVR. It's like, stop qualifying. Like, it wasn't great. That, that, was, that is not a great number. Like, to me, for that show, that should have been a 1.4. Well, that should have been their highest rated show ever. Ever. Straight Full up. Stop. Yeah, straight up. You've got you've got Brian Danielson in his debut match against Kenny Omega. That is, there is no bigger match at the moment, aside from maybe Omega and Punk, or even like Danielson Punk. There is no bigger match you can put on an AEW show than those two guys. And I was talking about like Andy Coyne from MCW and, and Deathmatch Down Under. That's Lord Andy Coyne. Thank Lord you very Andy much. Coyne. Sorry about that. Um, he was commenting on it as well on our uh, Instagram. And I, I, there's something that I'm interested in too. I want to see the quarter hour breakdowns to see what that rate, that match in particular rated. And if the, how far, if, if of course how they did, the ratings dropped off after that match just to see why it skewed to 1.2. So maybe there was 1.4, 1.5 watching the Omega Thing match. You go, oh, we've seen that. Let's turn off now. Which, like, for, for the actual match was great because you put them on first, so there was no commercial breaks. But I don't know how much that might have hurt the rest of that show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so a couple of other things going on in AEW. Ricky yes. Starks has replaced Mark Henry on the Rampage commentary team. I thought Ricky Starks was quite fun on commentary. The The matchup with Taz was uh, pretty goofy, pretty entertaining. Um, I was saying before, I'm not a huge Mark Henry fan. I think that he needs work at what he's doing. He's very robotic at the moment. Um, so hopefully uh, with Ricky Starks there, it gives Mark Henry a chance to improve before he comes back to do more of that. Um, that's my hope. What are you thinking? Um, let Ricky Starks wrestle. Yeah. That, that's my, like he's a young active wrestler. Why are you putting him in the commentary booth? And it's that thing of, you know, it, it's a shame where when people are good, they get the jobs that other people can't do. Yeah. And not the job that they should be doing. I'd love yeah. to see Ricky Starks wrestling as well. I know, uh, know, that, know that from experience. But if it's, seriously, like, um, like if you were going to replace anyone, I would have replaced Jericho. Because Jericho, to me, makes me not want to listen to the commentary on those shows. My hope is that Jericho is just not going to be on that booth very often. Mm. Put and Punk, he, put he Punk wasn't there on... instead. So then Punk, Punk doesn't have to wrestle every week. Punk That's was a great, great idea, actually. Put Punk Anytime there. Anytime Punk got on the commentary desk, it was gold. I think that's a great idea. If, if anything, like when he did that commentary with Jericho, he shut Jericho up for a good portion of that show and made it more listenable. I, I find it like nails on a chalkboard listening to Jericho yelling all the time. And yep. then like, Agree. like one second he's a baby face, the next second he's a heel, one second he's like in commentary. It's like, make your mind up when you want to be and go with it. Don't do one and stop fucking yelling. Amen. Uh, so Dynamite will be moving to TBS next year. Rampage is staying on TNT, but Dynamite will be heading to TBS. And the rumors going around is it's going to be a TBS women's title as kind of a secondary women's title. Um, I hate that because I, if you want to put more women on the shows, put more women on the shows. Don't make another belt that you then feel like you have to have segments to support, which is just another belt ticking the box for the women rather than actually writing women's segments and if that, you're going to do it makes me grumpy if you're going to do it make it a tag title yep make it a yeah, women's tag title that. but it's like originally it was going to be both both shows were going to move to tbs but now it's like um, rampage is staying on tnt i don't know if that's reflective on their ratings or if it's just a just a, a time slot sort of thing they like it where it is or maybe they can get them a more advantageous like time spot now that uh, yeah. i don't know and just like i want points there for saying the word advantageous um well done thank you lots of syllables in that one todd Th thank you but i know also like the box in that this this morning i think i saw it on on their their new bio that they want trios titles so i don't know if that's gonna and that's just been a rumored thing for a while but I don't know if yeah, that's going to Yeah, I'd love to see trios fruition. titles, but 
just because I love Death Triangle so much. I want to see Death Triangle constantly. Um, anyway, uh, moving away from AEW, let's talk about what's been going on in WWE at the moment. Yes. We've got a draft coming up uh, yep. between SmackDown and Raw. And as part of that approaching, a lot of what we've seen has actually been uh, some interbrand events so our last couple of main events we've had new day versus the brotherhood and we've had a triple threat with lashley reigns and big e uh, uh that was a great match i thought mm. reigns coming out on top um shows that lashley has really been a a bit of a sleeper great worker lately um i thought that he actually did a really good job with the belt and having him in that triple threat match be really good i thought you know proved that again um reigns is still the top dog in the company um and i think you know doing this interbrand stuff in the lead up to the draft has been interesting do you agree yeah yeah like it that that match that that triple threat made me want to see reigns and lashley and also made me want to see reigns and big e and also big e and lashley in singles matches like yeah. at different points big and that's men, what you want out of that match big meaty men slapping meat slapping meat that's right <laughs> and that's yeah and that like that that tells you right there just the size of those three guys tells you the disparity between them and the aw product the aw yep. product is a lot more of the smaller type smaller type dudes where these guys are like they are they are they are what wwe want they are larger than life characters All right, uh, let's run through the Extreme Rules card, which is coming up. Let's run bottom to top. So we've got Liv Morgan versus Carmella. We've got a SmackDown tag. Uh, which way do you think that's going, Liv Morgan, Carmella? Um, I, I hope Liv. I, like I also Liv. hope Liv. I like Liv. I like Liv a lot. I don't like that they're making, like, Tony Storm just like a, a garnish. A yeah, a garnish yeah. at the moment to a match. But I like Liv Morgan. I want to see her do more. I think Liv Morgan is seen as, you know, the old diva style. And I don't think she is. I think she works really hard and she's really yeah. quite good. So I hope yeah. Liv... Carmella is the old diva that style. Not... Yeah, that's right. SmackDown Tag Championship match, uh, the Usos versus the Street Profits. Um, I love the Street Profits. I don't see the Usos losing this one. It's I think that, that the Brotherhood is too big. That's going to be the sleeper match of the show, I think. Yeah, I think it could be absolutely fantastic. Especially if you watched um, SmackDown this week with the match with Roman and um, what's his name? The skinny, oh, um, the skinny yeah, yeah. one from Street Profits. Can't can't remember the name no, at the moment, but, but really good match. That shows me that that dude has got a massive future. Like he can be somebody, re- like in the in the future, because he had yeah absolutely hung hung with hung with Roman kept up the intensity, kept up the crowd work, kept up. He was such a good showcase for his abilities, that 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 SmackDown. So, yeah, that's, really that, good. to me, sleeper of the show, that one. United States Championship match, Damian Priest versus Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy. I've got Priest for this one. They are building Priest really well. I think this is him with a couple of older guys to show that he can hang, that he is part of that upper echelon. Yep, totally agree. Totally agree. You put in, you put him in there with a high flyer like Hardy, and also a powerhouse like Sheamus, and you come out on top because he's that that mix of both. Really, um, it, it shows that's one thing that they are doing right. As much as we give WWE hell about the, how they present certain people, like like Bearcat, <laughs> <laughs> um, they that, are doing... that's not on our rundown. How no. are you feeling about? Uh, about Bearcat as the new nickname. Do you know if it's paying tribute to Bearcat Wright, I love it. Because if like for people that don't know, Bearcat Wright was the first ever black world champion. So if he's if they're doing it and they've they've like asked him if he wants to do this because this I love that idea. I love I love paying tribute to, to someone from the past like that. But I actually didn't know that. So there you go. Yeah. I, that's actually really cool. Uh, I, I didn't say. So if you're not sure, Keith Lee got oh, sorry, Bearcat yes. as a new name. Yeah, Keith, um, Bear, so. Bearcat Keith Lee. But yeah, that's like Bearcat Wright was the original first ever Black World Champion. So if uh, in that, that case, I've completely changed my tune. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> okay. But yeah, that's, that's if they're doing it because of that, I love it. So there you go. But the, the one thing that they have done really well is, is pushing Damien Priest. Because obviously they see 
like main event status in him in the future. So they're doing something. Then they're actually doing it right, which you can't say that about a lot of the things that, they've, that they're doing when it comes to building young talent, like a ricochet, like a like numerous people. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, they've dropped the ball a lot of times, so to see them not drop the ball is really good. It's refreshing. Um, we've got, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, we've got a SmackDown Women's World Championship match. I think this is obviously one that a lot of people are very hyped for. Bianca Belair uh, trying to regain the title against Becky Lynch. I've got a feeling that Lynch is going to win. It's not what I want. I think Belair really showed that she is the goods over the past six months or so, and I don't love the way Becky retook the title. I know we spoke about that on the pod, um, but I think that they are going to keep it on Becky. Mm. But it's almost um, like you're really anticipating this match because you want to see him face off. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So it's almost like they did the right thing at SummerSlam then. Yeah. Um, we've also got a Raw Women's Championship match that's Charlotte Flair versus Alexa Bliss. Um, I mean, this is where we're just bumping Flair's numbers, right? Yeah. So maybe we get Bliss winning so that Flair can win it back later, but I, I think Flair takes this one. Yeah, I think Flair. I like the worst part is I like Alexa Bliss as a worker. I think she's a really good worker. I just I'm not a fan of what they're doing with not this into character. this gimmick. No, no. like she's like my my wife even said the other day, she's watching it, she goes, So she stole Bray Wyatt's gimmick and then Bray got fired. And I'm like that's pretty much, that's an accurate assumption. Yes. Yep. That's about <laughs> what happened. Yeah. And then we've got the main event is Universal Champion Roman Reigns defending against the demon Finn Balor. Um, I think Finn wins. And the reason I think that is that, and I said it last week, I think if you bring the demon back and the demon doesn't win, you're wasting all of our time. And I know mm. WWE does like to waste our time, but I don't think they would bring the demon back just to lose after all this time. I don't necessarily know if it's a clean win. I think Lesnar is probably involved to build for... And, and that's the thing. Roman Reigns is so good. I don't think anyone touches him at the moment in terms of performance. So it would make sense to leave the championship on him. But because he is performing so well, you don't need the championship because he is going to claim to be the head of the table no matter what. And you can have people try to say, you're not as good as you think you are. I'm going to beat it out of you. And he shuts them down. And then it builds up to him potentially regaining the title at WrestleMania. Um, yeah, that's, I think it goes the way of the demon with an assist from Lesnar. Um, I don't. I think Reigns goes over for the mere fact of, uh, I don't think Rain. I don't think Lesnar will help Finn Balor win because Lesnar wants the belt. And he's been very clear about that. Like I want, like give me a title shot. So why would so he? In that case, maybe the demon loses because of uh, Brock interference because Brock needs Reigns to win so that he can get the belt. Yeah, that, that would be interesting. Yeah, that might happen, but unfortunately, I don't see the the, the demon winning. Like I, it would be cool because I, because I don't know what's happening with this draft. Like for all we know, they could send like Lashley to SmackDown and Roman to to Raw to try and bolster the Raw numbers, and then maybe you could have if like, if that's the case, then you could have the like Demon versus Lashley, and that would be a fresh matchup. And it's sort of like, well, not the demon, but Finn Balor, you know what I'm talking about. And are you talking about versus Big E for the WWE title? Yeah. Yeah. Just coming in, going after that. Because I don't want to see E lose. And that's the thing too. Like, I'm surprised that they haven't got Lashley and E on here. Yeah, me too. That that, me too. that does surprise me. Because you would think you would try and capitalize on the momentum Big E has at the moment. But then again, do you want to job Lashley out straight away? Uh, yeah. It's a thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go away from the big two and talk about some news that's happening. Or actually, let's not leave WWE just yet. Andrew Yang, a political figure in the US, has uh, tweeted out that he's come out of a meeting with uh, some officials and said, if you are from WWE uh, and you feel like uh, you were an employee there and not just a contractor, 
come talk to me. We've got a lawsuit going. Let's go. Um, great. The fact that there's not a union for these wrestlers yet is ridiculous. I know that that's, you know, I, I never shut up about this kind of stuff, but wrestlers need to be compensated for what they're doing. They need to be supported. They are not independent contractors. If they are signed onto a place and they can't work anywhere else, they're not independent contractors. And I'm really glad to see, you know, some big name political power getting in on this. Mm. What's your feeling, Todd? Um, I totally agree with that. I don't think you should just limit it to WWE. It should be all of professional wrestling. I know you're I know you're singling out WWE because it's the big fish, but it should be all because like AEW don't give people health care. They don't. No, that's right. Like they give the Bucks, Omega, like anyone who works in the staff, they get health care. Those everyone else, like Ricky Starks, MJF, they do not. As much as like people will want you to believe that they do, they don't because they looked into it and they saw how much it was going to cost. And it's the exact same reason why the WWE didn't do it. They should be doing it. I totally agree. They should be looking after these guys because at the end of the day, these guys are their money. And the whole idea about you just, a, the, the whole CM Punk thing, we're just a cog, you break, you replace it with another cog, I think is a silly, silly idea. As much as it's it's true, it's silly. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be the case. We should be supporting these guys. I know that the WWE at least um, do support, well, like if you're injured, they do pay for their injuries, like pay for their rehab if they're on staff or if they're in... Because I don't think that I know I'm pretty sure I'm not sure to be honest with you that Brian and all that yeah, paid for their, their their rehabs with all of that sort of stuff. And I know that they offer rehab to like if you have a drug dependency problem or a, a substance abuse problem, they pay for rehab for that. And that's whether you you're a part of the company or you've been a part of the company. If you have an issue, you go, can go to them and say I want to go. But to But again, rehab, that's and they pay seen for that. as something. That's seen as something that they're doing out of the goodness of their heart. Whereas, but it's not. They should you know, just be doing it. They should be I'm, doing it. I'm not too sure about the whole. They should be doing it once you've left the company. I think once you've left the company, you've left. It's not like not like I can I can hurt my back now and go back to my my company, like. 10 years ago when I worked in a printing press and go, oh, I've hurt my back. Can you guys pay for this? Cause I'm, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I'm not too sure about that, which that I think is really nice. And now since the whole Daphne thing, they offer mental health care, which mental is health. great. That's, that's amazing. I, as much shit as we can talk about it. And I, I'm sure the, I, I'm sure that AEW do the same would, would, I would like to think they do the same thing that they, they're offering mental health like cover, not cover, but care and, and yeah, having it. them talk to people. So that, that is good. But the whole Andrew Yang thing, I hope that, that something happens where they do it. I'm not all that confident that it's not just bluster because Andrew Yang says a lot of stuff and never follows through. I mean, it, the, Andrew Yang thought he was going to be the Labor secretary. And he yeah, never, we'll see. We'll he, see he what happens. Got that spot. And then he ran for the mayor of New York and, and didn't win that. So it's sort in of like, saying that, this feels pretty open and shut. So maybe, uh, you know, yeah, maybe um, he's gone for something that he knows he can get. So let's yeah, see. I'm, I'm, I'm be interested to see how many people contacted him. Yeah, and who they Definitely. were. Who they were is probably more important to me. Yes, I think, if it's not just people with access to grind and it's with with actual yeah. legitimate claims. Yeah, it's not going to be nails in the steroid case. No, no. Okay, uh, let's talk about MLW because Fightland is going to uh, premiere on Vice and it's premiering with a huge champ versus champ match. National Openweight Champion Alex Hammerstone versus the undefeated World world Heavyweight Champion Jacob Fatu. Uh, Can't wait. Cannot wait. This is, this is an old school match right here. This reminds me of when you see Hammerstone and Fatu in a ring, it's like we're seeing Hogan versus Junkyard Dog. Mm. Like this is going to be wicked. I can't wait. Yeah, it's a whole, because um, I watched the, the their debut Fusion show, the new show. I don't know if you've watched it yet. But it I was haven't like, gotten to it, no. Oh, it was, oh, it was so good because it was, um, there was a, uh, a, a street, a Texas bunkhouse brawl, I think it was, with the Von Eriks and, and another team I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Really good match. And then you've got, you had after that, you just had a, a couple of um, cruiserweights going at it. It was a really good match. Main event, 
was Davy Richards, TJP. Oh. Great. And, and then in between that, they've also got um, – also it was Team Lawler and the, the Fire Exit stuff. Right. But in between that, you've also got Dario Cueto from – Lucha Underground. With the, yeah, because they're new... building towards that Azteca Underground. Yeah. Thing. You've got um, one of my all-time favourite workers, Matt Cross, is over in MLW. So there's so, oh, so much. You will, love, you will love the open then because Dario Cueto does a whole like, little promo. This is a backstage promo. And then Matt Cross walks up to him and they cut, They have a little back and forth. And uh, like Matt Cross is like, you're not going to pull the same bullshit you pulled last time. And then works <laughs> off. I'm like, oh, that's so right, I know, I know what I'm watching when we're done. Yeah. Right. So it's <laughs> and that's, that, that for for people at home, that's free on YouTube. Just look up MLW, and th- those shows are free on YouTube. So yeah, but just leading to this this Vice Land, thing, and that's good. That's massive because their leading is um, Dark Side of the Ring. Yeah, well. that's right. And and as well as that, they've got a four way for the middleweight championship. That's Myron Reed. Um, Ares, Aramis, and Tajiri. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a belter. My, if you haven't seen Myron Reed, really good worker. Really good worker. And I, 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 I love Aramis. I didn't talk about it before, too, but um, Jacob Fatu, Hammerstone, these are two guys that, that really like it's amazing that they're there. They should probably be somewhere else. Like, I think it's the, the Fatu hasn't exactly got the most clean criminal record. And that's why he never got, he hasn't well, been signed. So, and that, but that, that's what I hear anyway. That's why he hasn't been signed by WWE because he's, you would think he would be amazing as like a muscle guy for Roman Reigns in Bloodline. Like someone like that, just point destroy. What? Hammerstone is like, he, he looks like he came from 80s WWE. Do you know what it's he looks insane. like? He looks like if Shane Douglas really worked out. Yeah, <laughs> he does. I love Hammerstone. I think he's awesome. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's going to be an absolute yeah, belter. That, and that is a huge, huge ma- a huge show or huge match for them to debut that first show in. And I can't wait to. I uh, probably will have to find surreptitious ways to, to watch that show, but I will yep. find them and I will watch it. I will watch it oh, hard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll have to cover that on the show because I'll definitely be watching it. Mm. Um, yeah, that, that card. Wow. Um, I will really quickly address before we get to chicken salad, chicken shit. That's debatable. Todd did win this one. Um, barely, barely. It was close. Um, just. You know, and I want to, uh, you know, just give a big shout out to all the wrestlers who didn't want to piss off promoters when they voted ah, for you on that one. You know, it's an anonymous vote, right? So that's fine. <laughs> There's not like people put their names on things. Stop trying to qualify your losses, sir. Oh, I'll qualify like I did all I like, Todd. I'll, <laughs> I'll qualify it all I like. That's wrestling, right? <laughs> it's all heels. Right. That's heels. You're not a heel. I'm the heel. <laughs> What's your chicken shit this week, Todd? Um, again, camera work. AEW camera work. Please stop giving away stuff. I know, and, and I don't know why because y'all have been doing this for years. Like Bruce Mitchell has been doing this from Nitro days. You, you should know to not cut when a guy's got his head underneath the bloody apron like Alistair Black had. Or what's his name now? Um, Mal- Malachi Black. Malachi Black. Uh, you should know not to do that because you're giving away stuff. Don't give away the farm. And if somebody's got like an angle where you can see they're clearly not hitting someone, don't show that angle. Especially when, it's an, when you're doing a rampage, when it's a tape show and you can edit that shit. Edit that shit. It's as simple as that. I that's it just really, really annoys me. And also the whole Arn Anderson thing that cuts to me my quick because I love Arn. Like, stop making him look like a bumbling old fool because he's not. Yeah, fully one agree. Of your, one of your chicken shits, sir. All right. This is a chicken salad disguised as a chicken shit. Oh. Right. You know how we were talking before? about how AEW is not putting good women's matches on TV. They're just ticking the box. Yep. AEW Dark had Big Swole versus Alley Catch. Why is that not on the big show? Swole is money. Alley Catch is great. Give us this match on TV. Why are you making these good matches and sticking them on Dark where no one can see them? I'm 
absolutely sick of it. Um, I, yeah, I really just want these really great performers to get an opportunity to shine and then not. And you, I'm really tired of it. Sorry, did you watch that match at all? I'm just, I'm um, curious. Went out of my way to watch it because yeah. I love what, baseball. What is, was it in the studio, the new studio? Or yes. Not, yeah. What's it, what's it um, like? Because I haven't seen it. So what's the, what's the setup like for that? It feels like, um, do you remember NXT right when the network started? Where there's like, you know, four rows of fans? Was it like it WCW like worldwide sort of deal? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's what I think. Um, so I've seen photos. That. I've seen photos. I just haven't watched the show. Yeah, yeah. It's um, you know, it's it's small. It feels like everyone who's there is really into it, which is good. But um, does it feel like I they're mean, developmental? Yes. Yeah, it does. Um, and which is ridiculous because the people they've got on it don't feel developmental. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like it was um. But then that's the way AEW, that's the way it, NXT it had like, started. It had like LAX versus Chaos Project. You know what I mean? And like Serpentico knows what he's doing. Santana and Ortiz know what they're doing. Like that's not and a then there's Luther. And then Luther is also there. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris's friend. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> uh, chicken salad for this week. Todd, take it away. Uh, it's got to be Brian Omega. Yeah, that's match. my show. Such how, a good how match. Could it not be? Um, again, like I said it before, FTR, they're my favorite tag team in the world. I like you like your Lucha Bros. FTR just FTR are the style I love in wrestling. Good storytelling, believable action, uh, believable storytelling, like inventive, like in the way they 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 invent their ways to cheat. And they they take from the legends, and they do you know what I mean? They they take all the best bits from the different legends of the past, like the yeah. Midnights and, and Arn and Tully, and I love that. That that to me is rare, and that's that's why they're so they're so fucking good at what they do. And it like they are they're I, incredible. I want them to be the tag champions. I just do. I do because it doesn't matter who they're up against. That to me, that 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 right there, they're a team that the championships are made for. Because whoever is in that 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 match with them are going to look good. Yeah. They can work with every style, and there's not a lot of guys, single or tag, that can do that. That I have work every they're very and like this is probably the ultimate compliment to Dax and Cash. They are the Bret Hart of tag yeah. team wrestling because they can work anyone. I have a couple of comfort matches that like, if I'm, you know, just done for the day, had a big day, want to turn my brain off and watch something. There's a couple of comfort matches that I have. One is um, Toyota versus Hakuto from Destiny 95. I think that's probably my favorite match of all time. And uh, another one, another couple of matches that I just turn my brain off and watch because I love them is uh, the two out of three falls uh, American Alpha versus DIY and uh, sorry, American Alpha versus uh, what were the, what were FTR called again? The re, uh, revival, revival, and as well DIY versus revival. Those matches are unbelievable because Dax and Cash are so so good, mm. and I can watch those matches a million times, and I never get tired of them mm. um, because they're telling a story. It's absolutely fantastic. But yeah, I, I don't know how we can you know have this week without our chicken salad being that great 30 minute non-stop belter between Omega and Danielson. It's the, just the best that we had. It's so you talk about like your comfort matches, like for me, and it was something cause I was having this discussion with the, the bro day boys because they were saying, cause we were making the, um, the analogy of, of punk and cause they came out in the press that they were talking about, like punk was like, I'm not Hogan, Daniel and Cole aren't Nash and Hall, blah, blah, blah. And, um, Thing was saying that that one of the bro day was like at the time was saying that that Punk and Cole were bigger than Nash and Hall going to WCW. I was like, that's just wrong. It was like they're like, oh no, they come. I said, well, Punk had wrestled for seven years beforehand, so that's like the anticipation. Yeah, I'll give you that. But Nash had just come off doing a whole program with the Taker and Shawn Michaels. Hall had been putting over like guys left, right, and center in high profile spots before jumping to. WCW, those two, those two moved the needle when they went to 
that was the biggest thing and the market needle mover. They were a needle movers when they went oh, to yeah. WCW Nitro. But it made me think of, because you were talking about comfort matches, like two of my, one of my favorite comfort match is a Kevin Nash, Shawn Michaels match from In Your House 7. That, that is an amazing match. That and Shawn Michaels, Owen Hart from In Your House 6, I love those two matches. I, I love them. They aren't my favorite matches of all time, but they are ones I can go back, I can switch my brain off and just watch it because they entertain me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with that, uh, please, if you like what we're doing here at Making Chicken Salad, please follow uh, us on social media. You can head to all of the Wrestle Radio Australia social media. And as part of that, please send in any questions that you'd like us to answer. We always love to hear from the listeners and, you know, respond to the things you're thinking about international wrestling. So do you want to give those social media handles there, Todd? Uh, yep. On um, Facebook, uh, Facebook, Facebook, just look up Wrestle Radio Australia. On uh, Instagram and Twitter, we are Wrestle Radio AU. Fantastic. Uh, on top of that, uh, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Wrestle Radio Australia, um, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, it's free. Hit the subscribe, uh, especially if you're going to Apple Podcasts. If you can, please give us a rating and a review. If you give us a five star review, it really helps us get into the ears of more people. That's massive. Uh, also, head on over to Redbubble, search WRA or Wrestle Radio Australia. You'll find some Wrestle Radio Australia merchandise there with the profits going to Beyond Blue and Gotcha for Life, uh, which are fantastic charities. And you also get to represent that you're supporting Wrestle Radio Australia. So that's fantastic. Um, Anything else that I know that there's a couple of shirts that you're going to have going up soon, Todd, with maybe a shirt with uh, some making chicken salad out of chicken shit written on it. So keep your eyes out for that if you like uh, if you like the show, but also if you're a fan of those classic wrestling phrases, I think Todd's doing some of that. Yeah. Um, anything else that I've missed there, Todd? Uh, no, I just want to give a quick shout out to um, one of one of uh, the wrestlers up here, one of my mates, CJ. Uh, he's in the hospital at the moment. I just want to give a shout out to him, mate. Um, all the best. Hope you come out of this. As strong as you possibly can, mate. Just thinking about you. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. Keep them in mind. Awesome. Well, thanks as always for your time, Todd. It's always a pleasure doing this with you. And uh, thanks for doing it on an off week so that we could cover this big event that's happened. No, no, uh, thank and- you. Thank you. Because originally behind the scenes, guys, when we first started doing this, um, he was just like, I could probably do one every two weeks. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. That's, that's what I want to do. So to do one this week, Thank you so much, mate. It's, it's great. I'd no, that's like- all right. I'm getting back to work in a second, so always more stuff to do. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, couldn't wait this week. Had to talk about talk about all the huge stuff that's going on. Yeah, well, if, so- we, didn't, if we didn't do one this week and we did one, like, the next week, like oh, we yeah, normally do. Four hours would- long. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> awesome. So thanks, everyone, so much for listening. For Todd Eastman, I'm Lachlan Albert. Have a good one.